Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment Course from New Earth One Network. This is designed exclusively for your higher self connection and embodiment. Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment class. I'm Loren Gailey, and we are here with a spiritual teacher, Karsten Spencer. And he's going to share on the incredible energies that are bathing our beloved planet. Hi, Karsten. Hi, Loren. So wonderful to be with you as always. Beautiful to have you here. Here we are in this year of the 222 codes, and this is Wow, really a time to move with the frequencies of the divine feminine. As we are doing this, we are supported in a multitude of ways. How have you been dealing with the energy so far this year? Can you share your insight? Whew. Well, it's, you know, it, it feels, I guess the main word that comes up, it feels like there's a liberation happening. Like we, Lauren and I were talking before, I'm going to move my kitty here, who always likes to be right in the middle of things. Here we go, Maxie. Um, Lauren and I were talking about sort of the, the power that we're feeling of this, this new energy that we're in, and I definitely felt a shift. It was really right around the new year. A lot of heaviness was coming up, I would say, November, December. But along with the heaviness, it's almost like there was this glimpse of this new, fresh energy coming through and a uh, number of things happen like you know th those synchronicities that come to you especially when when you're in a heavy or a dark what seems like a dark place those synchronicities that come to you that really are clear messages from spirit saying this too shall pass not only will it pass but by moving through it and being willing to move through it and feel it and let go of your the old judgments that seem to be so triggered. It, really, it was really, I felt like I was confronting stuff that I felt like I'd been moving through in my spiritual journey already, but it was just like the deeper level. It's almost like something else, and I'm because I say something else, I kind of know that it's my angels, Metatron and Kuan Yin, but these energies were coming in and clearing out old stuff and pulling up this, I'm going to call it the ancestral energy that connects me with the, I would say, the pure uh, purpose of my long journey and really the recognition of that it's not just this one lifetime because we get so stuck in that with all the collective consciousness. It really was the awareness of the eternalness of our journey and of the support that's always present. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a gift. I mean, it really feels like the old kind of blanket of collective consciousness and me against the world and I'm separate and I have to figure this out. All the, all the mental stuff was just cleared away and suddenly I, I'm seeing the universe and, and everyone, everything and everyone in it, even the relationships and things that used to push my buttons, I'm seeing them all simply as gifts, as the guidance from the universe, number one, letting me know that I'm connected with that divine power. And number two, that I can't get it wrong. <laughs> you just, you can't get it wrong and that there's support here. And it's almost like an old pair of glasses has been taken off and I've thro thrown them away and I'm seeing the world clearly and I'm sensing the stuff that's unseen. It's like that unseen world. You just even talking about it. It's so present. 
That is fascinating. And you put into words very articulately what I was feeling myself about the beginning of the year. I love that. So the mental stuff was cleared away. <clears throat> the old, <clears throat> it's like our old self. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm clearing for us. Oh, that's the throat <laughs> chakra. It's happening for a lot of us. Yeah. Very interesting. I just said very interesting. You know, like an old pair of glasses taking their being taken off us so we can see with fresh eyes with this new energy. And I was feeling myself that it was just our mental memory of the old paradigm that was keeping us in the memory of the old paradigm. Yeah. That's how new it felt. It was, <clears throat> I almost felt at one point like it was dizzying where it's like, what am I doing again? What, am, what are we doing? <laughs> so for you to say that that's because the old has been stripped away, that's wonderful. Yeah. We have yeah. sloughed off the old paradigm and yet we're still in it in the outer world. So as we're doing it, I love it how you could see the universe and you can feel connected to your divine power. What I've noticed, that, that has actually helped me identify things in my world where I'm not being triggered in the same way that I was. And I, I wonder if others who are viewing and listening to this feel the same way. You know, um, to put it in a mundane way, like noise out in the neighborhood that used to like get my attention or distract me no longer does so and this could be tumbling rocks <laughs> something like that and it just doesn't trigger me so that's important right if we can stand in that vibration then i don't want to use the word bulletproof but you know we say that about yoga yoga makes us quote bulletproof it fortifies us. We are fortified when we stand holding that energy. Well, I think what's happening, and, and, and first let me say that that dizziness that often when I'm working with clients, they'll come in and they'll say, I'm just feeling confused or, or dizzy. So I often will ask them, tune into that feeling and let me ask you, is it dizzy or could you call it lightheadedness? And in most cases, They'll go, yeah, I feel lightheaded. I say, well, what if that lightheadedness is light that is activating in your head, that is clearing your old kind of grounding into the old paradigm, and it's really setting you free. And it's interesting when I give the mental body that little out, energy changes. People are able to allow this new energy coming in because they realize, oh, it's not bad. And when we connect that with that idea of bulletproofness, because it, 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 to me that goes along with kind of the old paradigm where our spiritual journey was we were, we were putting a lot of protection up around us. We needed our black tourmaline or, you know, this, the purple bubble around us. And what really has come to me really in the last five years or so, a lot through the presence process, which I really started doing almost 10 years ago, and I've done it with a number of people, it really helped me recognize that nothing that comes to me is working against me. So when I can start to look at those things, specifically the things that push my buttons, and say I was doing my meditation outside, I sit in the sun in the morning on my kind of my front porch, which faces the little street that we're on. And it's, we're in a kind of a quiet neighborhood, but it's the city, we're in San Francisco. So there's noise. So someone was out there with one of those blowing machines, which used to drive me crazy when I was out there <laughs> meditating. But today, because I was in this deep space, the vibration from that, it was activating my root chakra. And I was like, oh, yeah, because I wasn't resisting and I was able to say, oh, if this is here during my meditation, it must be in, on one level here for my benefit. There's a phrase in the presence process that says, if it's happening, it's required. And I've extended that to say, if it's happening, it's required for your own good, and if it pushes your buttons, it's here to clear old energies and extend your ability to take in what the world is giving you. I think that's what Jesus was saying in the Lord's Prayer when he said, give us this day our daily bread. He wasn't beseeching from some unknown God, give me what I need. He was reminding humanity that everything that God or Spirit offers you in each day is your daily bread. Can you be in a place of acceptance, kind of Buddhist practice, and say yes 
what's this about rather than immediately pushing away something that doesn't feel good and letting it trigger something's wrong I need to fix this so it pushes us into fight flight we go or I go and I'm learning to do it I don't do it all the time but I'm learning to go oh okay if I didn't call this to myself my own conscious it must be my co-creator so what's this about and it really allows that you know what we've been talking about so long that open heartedness that is able to say yes to the world and allow it to come in beautiful really beautiful to you know just be in that presence and look at everything what an awareness and, and it is Mar an awareness. I, I want to add one thing because I know when I share this with clients they can often use it to kind of deny what's going on inside and we don't want to do that you want to acknowledge you want to thank the messenger when you get triggered when something comes up and then you want to get the message because the most palpable and potent way that our guides are speaking to us now is they're reprogramming the body and inviting our mental focus which has been so out to begin to listen to what's going on in here particularly when we get triggered because the the thing that's blocking us is not the emotions that we feel when we get triggered it's the story in our head that says oh my god something's wrong and so the emotion pushes it into fight flight and we jump into the outside world and fix it or try to and sometimes we can the challenge is we're using that energy to create ourselves as the problem solver so we're like oh good I could I fix that I'm a good problem solver and spirit says oh wonderful if you want to be a good problem solver here's another here's another here's another so when we can feel the feeling and say oh wow let me just be with this feeling what I notice and what's particularly Metatron and Quan Yin having been encouraging me to notice is notice how that energy rather than being pushed down and you coming up with a plan how it begins to move through your body and literally activate the chakra system most potently it connects the solar plexus with the heart the heart opens and then we begin to feel that sense of compassion for ourselves and for the other and so all the things that push our buttons for me at least I begin to see oh that's just life happening is there something for me to do around that that would make me feel better sometimes there is and it's clear and I do it but I do it from a calm place not a place of fixing but very often it's awareness that says oh that's not my concern that's somebody else's so you're able to set the world free to have its own experience particularly those relationships that are close because for most of us I think that's what can be the biggest challenge is those close intimate relationships and I think the reason that is is because we draw people to us that have similar old patterns and if just one person within a system can rather than jumping in and trying to fix it manipulate can feel the stuff allow it to liberate them and then really see the situation as all in divine order that energy allows stuff to clear and what's been amazing is conversations angst that I've had with people family members sisters brothers partners uh, business colleagues that have seemed like they've been there forever no matter what I do it always seems like you know the same thing comes up when I do this feeling work and it maybe doesn't happen all at once but when I get triggered go okay this is my stuff and you can actually do it right in the middle of a conversation you realize it's called I call it conscious listening so you show up in a conversation not just listening to the words but really taking that person in seeing their body language feeling them breathing them in not just from the mind but from your chakras at the same time listening to how whatever is happening is affecting you just to be in that space I've seen old stuff when it starts to come up literally not only dissipate in the moment but be gone and not just with that person with others it's because you're using your power to allow the karmic pattern to begin to clear and it's not a mental process it's a feeling process it's an experiential process so beautiful thank you for sharing that I love it um, it brings to mind 
you know, when we realize what if there's nothing wrong <laughs> that was um, mentioned to me and it's the same feeling that I get listening to you. If we, I mean, that dissolves so much, so much angst. Yeah. What if nothing's wrong? And, and so we're here. All right. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. You are a wonderful teacher on the presence process. This is your method. Can you share with us more on the presence process and really the power of it? Sure. Well, the presence process is a book that was written by Michael Brown that's, that came into my consciousness probably about 13, 12 or 13 years ago. And the reason I grabbed onto it and said there's something here is the person that offered it to me, I hadn't seen him for, for maybe a month. And the minute we got together again, I noticed this shift. He seemed lighter. He seemed more present. He seemed more happy and joyful. And I said, you know, hey, what's been going on with you? He said, well, I have this book, The Presence Process. And he gave me his copy. And I picked it up and just couldn't stop reading it. There's three sections. Uh, uh, the first two sections are really preparation to then go into this 10-week process that has simple practices that you do each day that work with the mental body, the emotional body, and your higher energies. Um, and it just, it, it's, it's telling, it told me a lot of stuff that I already knew, but just kind of in a new paradigm that allowed us to move through. And the gift for me is, it, number one, was so liberating for me, and then I knew that, because other my, my clients started asking me, so I said, okay, let me take a group through it. The gift when I take the group through it is I bring in all my other energies as well because it really was, it, it felt like it was the exact piece I needed at a certain time to help open. But it's very much Buddhist philosophy, but it's written in a very, I would say, more contemporary, or contemporary more scientific language. So it really speaks to certain people in a way who haven't been able to, to download other stuff. So it's, 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 a, it's a powerful process. And I'm actually going to be bringing a group through it, uh, I think, starting in a couple of months. I'm going to do it again this year. Because my clients keep saying, when are you doing it again? So we will be doing it. So it's, it's a wonderful process. Oh, that's wonderful. And again, we have and, that. And, and, and Laura, let me just say that you can, go, you can get the book on Amazon and you don't need to sign up with the group and do it. You can absolutely do it on your own. So if it sounds interesting to anyone, I invite them to get the book. Start reading it. If it speaks to you, great. If it doesn't, you know, I, I'm a great one for saying that regardless of whatever work you're trying to do out there for your spiritual growth, at a core level, we're growing spiritually and we can't help it. With every breath, we are. And so rather than making your spirituality a chore, do the things that speak to your heart. Do the things that seem exciting to you and trust that you're, it, it's happening anyway. <laughs> yes, follow the juiciness and uh, the excitement and all of that. It's really wonderful. Good. All right. So those who are interested can check out the book, perhaps, and join you in your 10-week class. That's, that's what you offer. And information for that is right here on this web page. Uh, that course is available, so yes, we, that's very exciting. With, with a special offer, which I always love to do with when I, whenever I work with with Loren and Earth One, uh, I just always want to give special offers to groups. So yeah, if you do want to, if you are interested, you want to do it. I'm also always here just to answer questions if people are interested or want more information. Yes, really good. Okay, all right. Well, um, there's other teachings that you do. Well, let's talk about singing and soul singing because <laughs> wouldn't the world be a beautiful place if everyone remembered that they sang and they love singing and that they can sing. And when I think of New Earth, I see people singing and dancing and being wildly authentic. So soul singing, I mean, is this... Can you explain what is soul singing? Is it, is well, it getting in touch with our soul? Soul singing is an evolving process that really, once again, I, I was called to do it basically because my students kept saying, will you teach your toning technique? And I'm also a singer and I've, I, I've sung, I love to sing. And if we think of it and, and look at our, our 
long history, particularly of, of, of a lot of the, of the uh, indigenous peoples, our first expression or connection with spirit, they, they didn't think of it necessarily as praying or reaching out to spirit. They felt it as bringing spirit into them, so they would always do chanting, singing, dancing, to come together in community and to invite in spirit. So that's really, at a core level, that's what it is. But the other thing that's really been coming up for me, and I'm feeling Kuan Yin and, and Metatron here affirming it, that sound, vibration is the portal to connect with that divine spirit and bring it into the physical. Uh, there's a wonderful, if, if anyone's read Evan Alexander's book, The Neurosurgeon Who Had the Near-Death near Experience, which was amazing, and he wrote the book, uh, the, the Proof of Heaven, uh, he talked about when he was moving through the, the levels of consciousness, moving to what he calls the, the core, which is, he, he describes it as this inky black presence of absolute love and compassion. That's the core. But as he was moving to it through the angels, through the ancestors who were all there supporting us, there was this divine melody that he would hear. And he would just have to think about that melody or call it in and he could feel himself moving to these other levels. The other message that I've been getting through the toning, because I've been doing t t toning with my clients and the work that I do, I work with crystals and the voice. The tone, and I can feel it when it happens, it it's a harmonizer. It not only connects and gets the chakra system communicating, it connects the chakra system and gets them communicating so that the chakra system can activate the rainbow body. And let me say that we all have rainbow bodies that are present. Our time and space paradigm thinks we have to be on this long spiritual journey and then we, we uh, evolve into our light body. And that may be true and I'm looking forward to it. But in the meantime, where we're still in the physical bodies, that light body is activating around us and it really is kind of the, I would say it activates our inner awareness so that we can really palpably feel how we are connected to everything. So it really is, it's a communication thing. And it's not surprising that we human beings and many of the animals are able to activate sound through our throat chakra. So that's what I feel is really activating palpably on the planet now. The throat chakra and its ability to listen. Rather than to have to speak our truth, because you know we always talk about throat chakra, I've got to speak my truth. Well, until we're able to listen within and allow some of this clearing, we're continuing to really be in karma. We're reacting rather than speaking our truth. And so when that vibration opens up, it allows us to listen to the energies that are speaking to us. And the throat chakra, what it's doing now, at least what I really sense with myself and with clients that I work with, it's harmonizing our physical senses and what I would call our intellect or our ego mind. It's harmonizing that with the chakra system. And that's why a lot of us, and it's happening whether you're doing work or not, and that's why I think a lot of us are having a hard time because as we begin to activate the mental body and all our stories, all our memories, with the chakra system, the old angst and stuff starts to come up. We see the old, those old stories that keep us stuck or make us, not, make us feel anxious. And that, that happens to give us the option to say, I choose not to believe that anymore. You know, it's, it's like when life doesn't go the way you want it to, and then you blame yourself, <laughs> which I know I do. Uh, and you start rehashing, what did I do wrong to make this happen? It's that old false error thinking that somehow I'm being punished. Somehow this earth playground is a testing ground and there's someone judging me. Only one that's judging us is ourselves. So when I see that judgment voice coming up, and it's still there, I look at it and say, oh, I just don't believe that anymore. And sometimes I just laugh because that judgmental voice can sometimes be very vindictive. And I kind of laugh, and that laughter for me is an indication that, wow, I'm finally clearing that because I'm not taking it seriously anymore. That is a really great perspective because, wow, um, 
allowing the laughter to clear. So that becomes a really good clearing technique. Yeah. Is to laugh. And, you know, some, our ego mind would probably say, that's a cop out, just laugh it away. But really, that laughter is really key. Because well, you don't have to do it anymore. And I think it would be helpful if the ego mind did come up and say, oh, that laughter is a cop out. To, because it's not like it's not like we want to get rid of the ego mind. Only the ego wants to get rid of the ego mind. <laughs> the ego is that other part of us that we really want to come into harmony with. A lot of times it's connected to our inner child and our inner child's confusion about the constriction we get programmed with as we have to try to fit into this society. The gift is society is changing powerfully and we can change it moment by moment, individual by individual, by really accepting everything that's going on in us. So me, and that's interesting that you said that because I was laughing at, at, at myself yesterday because I forget what, I did a couple of, of things that my brain said, oh, that's so stupid. You kind of knew if you did that, this might happen. And I laughed and that same thing came up. Am I just washing it away because of the laughter? And so I stopped and breathed into it and I realized, oh, I was a little bit because there was some juice there if I could just breathe into it, which feels like deep self-forgiveness that has to do with all the times I did judge myself for things not going right or whatever. The other gift with the laughter is, is it is a clearing. Laughter and tears, I think, are, are two of the most incorruptible uh, expressions that we humans have. Um, as well as singing and dancing, you know, that's, that, that's part of it. Um, but I notice now that I don't laugh out loud, but when my partner or somebody else will say something that's clearly them trying to push their, they try, them trying to get rid of some negative stuff and it's directed towards me. I can see it and I do laugh at it because I'm laughing at my sense of freedom that I don't have to take that in anymore. And because I don't take it in and then hold a resentment, which is ultimately going to come back either to this person or someone else, I'm allowing clearing for that person because I'm seeing they're in, I'm seeing what's really happening. They've got some inner stuff coming on. They don't know what to do, how to get rid of it. And they're throwing it out. And I didn't take it in. And I didn't blame them. I didn't make them wrong. So it, it's just this freedom. And what I notice, particularly in relationships, if it's someone you don't know, which can happen too, you might not see the result. But someone you know, you will notice that there's a lightness that has come into the relationship. That something has been freed up, not just for me, but for the other. So we, when we can really deal with our own stuff, we start to see that, yes, what the quantum scientists are now telling us, that there's nothing out there but a projection of consciousness and what we believe shows up. When we can recognize that and really deal with what's going on in here, we see the glasses come off and we see what's really there. We, see, we begin to see the synchronicities rather than all the triggers that come up to push us. We see the support, the guidance that's out there. Yes. So very beautiful. So this is, I mean, really holding our own space for being aware of um, our energy and, and that feeling inside of us. So you were talking about the toning and, and as we use our voice and bring through tones that we can connect to higher beings through the toning. But you also mentioned that the toning helps us listen then to the energy, listening to the energy coming in. That's very interesting. Can you elaborate on that? So, so Loren, let's do it. I invite, every, invite you and everyone who's listening to we're just going to take a deep breath and make a soft hum eyes open or closed. Sometimes it's helpful to keep your eyes open because you'll notice the hum will bring you in, but you'll still be in the outside world. So let's do it. Let's take a deep breath and just hum through it.
And that then just with a sense of curiosity and openness, notice what's present. Let your inner ears open, let your inner eyes stay open. Now we're going to do it one more time, nice deep breath. And as the tone disappears, Notice if you can sense what I call the sound of silence. That within the silence there's clearly something present. I'm feeling it very palpably in my heart and throat. You may be feeling it somewhere else, but wherever you're focus, what I'm calling our third eye element, which is our focusing element, wherever it seems to be drawn to, that's your guides. That's the energies that are working with you. And our energies are not out there. They're present in our body. And the more we're able to be open and listen, just for our own self, we're creating that space for them to be present with us. And we don't even have to have the awareness that they're there. What Metatron continues to say to me is, I'm not separate. I'm not separate from you. I'm part of you. So just notice that sense of presence. That's all. We have this idea that it's so difficult, we have to do the breath of fire for, you know, three hours and make sure all, uh, we can do all the asanas and all this stuff. That's the old mental story that there's something wrong with us that needs to be fixed to finally get where we need to go. It's destination consciousness. Journey consciousness is becoming curious about what's already here and who I already am because the I am is the big picture and we are just specific points of view that our consciousness has grown to the point where we be, we're beginning to recognize that and so that inner listening humming it will bring you right into the moment. Did people feel that? I'd love to, you know, if, if people felt that. I don't know if you have a chat box open or whatever. But, uh. That is um, beautiful. I'll share my experience. Um, yeah. I've never been so aware of that just by humming in that way. So that was a beautiful technique. And we hope that those watching and listening could have their experience with that. But yes, I too felt the third eye. It was like I could see the sound in my body when I hummed. I could see it in my body. I could see it open my heart chakra. That was really cool. And then the heart chakra, it, you're right, it did open, it did expand. And that's why it's so important for our world to hum and sing and dance. <laughs> well, and, and, really, and really what we're doing we're remembering what we already knew as a child and that's the gift of what's happening now and it really just consciously sunk in at this point we're remembering what we knew as a child and now we have the opportunity to download that same knowing with all the nourishment that we've gotten from living through our life and getting to this point and what i want to say to everyone and this is really what's been blossoming for me in the last few years really potently the last year is that Nothing that has brought you to this point has been wasted. Nothing has gone wrong. Even or perhaps especially those things that you look back on and think, oh my God, God, why did I do that? If, if I wish that hadn't happened. Those are the best. That's the place where there's all this wonderful energy. So another thing when I work with clients, uh, I talk about regrets and resentments as doors that open to deep healing and compassion for the self when you can start to realize those things that you regret and that you that you have resentments for 
are ultimately the places where there's some error thinking. And if you can go back and simply feel the, allow yourself to feel the feeling and either let go of the story or look, what story am I telling myself about that situation? And always it's that something went wrong and it shouldn't have happened. And so how does the ego mind, the, the, the mental body that's addicted to time and space and this one lifetime, how does it fix that? Because it can't go back and change it. So it just holds on to this thing that something went wrong that's, and I'm now damaged goods. I can't, you know, can't figure this out. So you go back and you feel the feelings of it and then you, a and you ask yourself, what am I telling myself about it? And it's always that something went wrong, it shouldn't have happened. And then after feeling the feelings, because you've allowed some karma to clear, then you say, what if nothing went wrong? It's that same thing you said before. What if nothing went wrong? What if that wasn't a mistake? What if it just happened? What if everyone and everything involved was doing the best they could with the information they had and that spirit, that that divine energy was present in that situation, which of course is always true. It's just a way of reprogramming the error thinking. And then you ask yourself, okay, what's the gift from that situation? What are the gifts? And when you ask these questions, you don't want to jump up into your mental body and try to figure it out. There are questions that you open, that you ask, I would say, to the universe. You ask, and the presence process has a whole section on how we use questions. Because when you put a question out to the universe, ask and ye shall receive. You will get the answer. And the gift when it, and sometimes it will come right away. Sometimes you'll be clear, oh, well, this happened because of that, and I was able to, you know, you'll see all sorts of stuff. Sometimes it doesn't because spirit wants to give you an actual experiential example of the gifts. And they will show up if you stay open. It really is about learning to trust beyond the intellect because the whole error thinking of what's happened in the last 10,000 years is we've deified the intellect. And the intellect is wonderful. But there's so much more when the intellect can begin noticing what's going on in here and reconnect with the feeling center without being afraid of the feelings that feel uncomfortable, really kind of saying, hey, this is my, perhaps my channel that's really going to set me free. Once we stop resisting those uncomfortable energies, they move, shifts happen, you will, you will feel it. I think we're already feeling it, actually just listening and looking back at examples in our own life, hearing you speak of where, you know, we judged ourselves when we look at regrets and resentment, resentments, or, you know, even what we would say are embarrassing moments. Why are they embarrassing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, what's so embarrassing about it? Well, it's the self judgment that makes it embarrassing. So that's really good to trust beyond the intellect. That really is paying attention to the heart, uh, paying attention to the internal energies. Well, there's something else that you mentioned. You said that the light body activates. The light body activates with the singing and dancing and all of it, and, and through the chakras, the chakra work. Can you talk more about the light body and when we can understand when it's activating. There's questions around that whole topic. Wonderful. Well, the first thing I would say is we need to let go of the desire to understand what's happening. Because once again, that's the mental thing. I want to experience the light body would be a wonderful thing to say. And what I will say, and as soon as you ask the question, sort of the, the answer became clear to me. The light body and our awareness of it is the trust that there are other energies that want to be present with, present with us, not just to have us feel them, but they want to feel us. And they're not going to invade us without our permission. <laughs> and so it's simply staying open. It's simply doing a hum and recognizing that our chakra system is the portals for those energies to come in and help the the chakras to begin to communicate. It really is a harmonization of the chakras. And the missing piece has been our mental body, who when we, dis when we began to expand and 
understand about time and space and that we as our consciousness expanded we begin it and it 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 happened at the same time we began to open to the concept of god we began to understand our ability to affect our reality to be co-creators i connected to the story in the bible of adam and eve that moment when the evil eve that feminine energy said I want the knowledge of good and evil, which simply meant I want the knowledge of duality. I want the power to choose. I want to be able to ultimately create my own life. So that's when God said, the, the, the Bible didn't get it this clear, God said, hallelujah, I've got a co-creator, go out, the energy set us free to go create the world, go to consciously, go consciously play in this playground that I've created. And so we did separate from God for these last 10,000 years. Some people say it's the last 26,000 years where we were growing in consciousness and trying to grasp this connection. Well, the reason 2012 had such a big place in all the, in all the uh, ancient literatures and calendars was because they recognized that this would be the point where the mental body had grown to the point trying to figure out life so that it could turn back within and notice it's all happening from me. So that's really the light body. It's the recognition that there's divine help present and wanting to communicate through us and that they speak to us through experience, through a feeling. The gift is because these mental bodies have grown, we can also hear it in, we hear it in words and our communication. We can share it with others. That's also why toning and the voice is so potent when it doesn't need to be connected to words and concepts. It's the pure vibration. And that's why it helps to activate the rainbow body. That hum that we did basically is harmonizing the chakras so that we can feel our connection to the more uh, infinite energies that are centered in us. Each of us is a divine conduit of that source energy that is projecting their consciousness out and uh, participating in creating our universe. And so when we can be in nature and just feel for a moment the, the magic of nature, the connection with trees, it's pouring that divine energy into the field. So, and even, even when, we're, when we're, the mental body's not on board and we're in those angst places, the power of that angst that the mental body and we're individually feeling as the ego self that's just pure energy flowing into the system. So nothing bad is ever happening. I mean, I know we can look at the world now and say, oh my God, it looks crazy. I mean, even the, 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 the uh, you know, uh, a year ago when the, the, red, the thing happened at the, at the Capitol, you know, on one level, oh my God, that's so awful. But on another level, it's old stuff being cleared and us, you know, old structures falling apart and people questioning what we thought we knew and things are opening from the angels. I know I'm tuning into to Metatron right now, and he's just beaming in his. And when I say he's, you know, although those they're they're all they they hold both male and female energies, but Metatron always feels more masculine to me. But uh, he's just beaming that sunshine energy and say, yes, it's all part of your human experience. I don't know if that answered your question, but... <laughs> Absolutely, and how comforting it really is. And so... So, so Lord, Lord, I want to stop you. That comfort that you're feeling and anyone else that's listening is feeling, I just want you to get that this is why... This, this helps us see why the mental body is so important to begin to embrace the expansive, to begin to question all limiting beliefs that kind of make you feel stuck and don't feel good. Question them, because that's what will allow the uncomfortable feelings to clear. And in the clearing of the uncomfortable feelings and the energy coming up, it clears the mind. It's that positive brainwashing that's going on now when you see your old stories and stuff, just to see them and allow them to clear. And realize that a shift in consciousness to open up your awareness allows a lighter feeling. And that's partly why when people say, oh, I'm feeling confused or, or this dizziness or not grounded, 
embrace it. What if so? What if it's not bad? What if it's something good? Same thing with physical pain in the body. This is what Kuan Yin told me when I had this pain in my back and I kept going to the doctor. Something must be wrong. And that, that's even what I'm teaching. What if nothing's wrong? Well, it was so painful. I went to the doctor. And they kept saying, well, nothing's wrong. And every time I would get that message from the doctor, I would hear Kuan Yin saying, I told you so. <laughs> We're working with you. Sometimes a chronic pain in the body is simply the body says saying get out of your head and all the thoughts and be present with me be present with this discomfort without judging it let yourself feel what actually is pain i mean there's been so many uh, teachings and stories about people who through deep struggle and deep physical pain they came to their spiritual awakening it's partly the way our energies help to pull us into the body and the yeah. other thing I'll, I'll say is that I believe that a lot of the chronic diseases, particularly the cancers that we get, is it's the divine energies working on us. There's some sort of movement happening. And because we want to be in control and we want to know what it is, we reach into the collective consciousness. And I have to say I've worked with a number of people who... Uh, I'm thinking of, of one in particular who had something going on for a long time. We worked with it, and every session we had, they could feel some opening up. And then so something happened, they moved on. And a year later, I found out that she was diagnosed with cancer. She came back to me, and I said, well, how did it feel to be diagnosed? She said, oh, well, it was such a relief because I finally found out what it was. And at that point, I let go of, you know, she had moved on anyway, uh, I let go and said, okay, this is what she needs to learn now. She wanted to have the learning, whatever that was, through cancer because she called it in. And I work with other people who open up. So it's just trusting that, and I've seen myself do it with this pain in my back. I, I, I noticed that moment when I was thinking, well, those doctors don't know what's going on. I'll bet this is, you know, some kind of cancer and they didn't get it right. And then I caught myself and I heard spirit saying, do you really want this to turn into cancer? <laughs> no, I absolutely don't. Well, then look at what you're saying. And it was soon after that that the pain began to, di to dissipate. So just sharing really what the quantum scientists are now saying, what the, the great mystics have always said, that it's a projection of consciousness. What we believe shows up, and we that source energy, that divine all-powerful source that we call God or source or whatever is always saying yes to us because that's that uh, Adam and Eve story. I'm setting you free to create your own life with me, that co-creatorship. What do you want to create? So look at what you're focusing on because what you're focusing on is going to come to you. And, and we all know that, but we're in the bay, taking baby steps into really learning it and putting into practice and understanding how that relates to our emotional center and our mental body and the mirror of the universe that is always giving us information of what we're putting out. And that's why the non-resistance is so important to say yes to what's happening out there and most importantly, what's happening in here. How did you, what did you discover about the pain in your back? What was, did you understand what the message was? Yeah, it, it, it was old self-judgment, fear of moving forward, fear of trusting my true voice rather than trying to fit it into what I think is acceptable out there. These last few months have been a real powerful process of me owning the work that I've been doing really since I was in my 20s when I started teaching yoga and started, you know, doing this stuff on my own, that part of me was growing and blossoming, but the other collective conscious part of me, which was programmed in childhood of, from the love of my parents trying to fit me into society, because that's what parents do. Most of the abuse that happens, happens from the, the challenges that our parents have had trying to for, for the, from their parents trying to fit them in and they do the same thing to us most of the love that we get in childhood or a lot of it is based on the fear 
of life because we've really been programmed that life is fearful and it's something separate from us and we have to learn how to fit in. So that part of me was also growing. So even though my spirituality was growing and I'm talking to angels and I'm, you know, activating people's chakras with my voice, there was another part of me that said, oh, you're really woo-woo and you're really kind of out there. And that was kind of embarrassed about the work that I did. I wouldn't always share it in like mixed company. It wouldn't be the first thing I said. You know, when I was talking to someone, it's like, oh, I'm hearing Kuan Yin saying that there's stuff going on with your throat chunk or whatever. Um, to confront the embarrassment about that, particularly because there was that pain in my forehead. When, I mean, in my, interesting, I said my forehead. <laughs> um, pain in my shoulder back there. Kuan Yin was saying it's your right arm, your ability to really share your stuff in the world and that there's a big resistance there. And the way you heal the resistance is slowing down and doing the healing work that you do with others very gently and intimately with yourself. Be the compassionate, loving parent that you didn't have as a child. Tune into this thing in your back, not as though it's something that's not you that you want to get rid of, but that it's part of you. And when I did that, the clear message would say, it's where, oh, it was Quan Yin said, I'm opening your heart chakra. I was in, uh, when it first came up, I was at the, uh, in the botanical gardens here in San Francisco, I found this special spot that's in this special area that's called the children's garden. And I would go there at night when there were really, the kids were gone. And there was this one little bench that was kind of hidden where the sun would come in through the trees at sunset and I would just bask in the sun. And I was tuning into the energy and, and you know, and I, and I noticed that as I tuned into it and opened to the energies, the pain in my back would always either disappear or I would feel it, what I would call an integration. It would seem to spread out through my body and it was still, I guess I would still call it pain, but it kind of felt good, almost like a massage was moving into me and I could feel stuff moving in. And then it started to get cold, so I got up to leave and I was walking along a path and suddenly, like, like it's almost like something pushed me right down onto this bench that was sitting there. And I'm like, what was that? And Kuan Yin said, I'm not finished with you. <laughs> she sat me down and just had me feel it and really go into the pain without resistance. And the pain became very strong. But then it turned into, it was almost like electricity. And I heard the ringing in my ears and Kuan Yin called me to do some real gentle humming, just like we were doing. And within the hum, I could just feel not only my heart chakra opening, but this sense of these, I would call them angel wings, just with my breath, drawing this divine energy into my heart. And I heard Kuan Yin say, this is always happening. This is always what we're doing with you with each breath. And, it's, and, and she said, and the pain might not go away right away and it might come back. That's because there's a lot of opportunity for clearing and healing and when you can remember that nothing is wrong and open to what's happening, more information will come, not always at the time that it's happening. So it really is allowing us to grow that faith and trust that the mental body and the ego is always not gonna get that immediate answer. It's, it's so addicted to that sometimes it's just being in that I don't know place and trusting. So that's a lot also what it opened up, that ability to be in that I don't know place. Wow, really trusting beyond the intellect. Yes. Going deep within yourself and listening. Yeah. Quite a journey, a journey that we're all on. You have uh, classes and we invite our viewers and listeners to check out this webpage for those classes. One is on confident manifesting, and this is pretty much what you're talking about, working with the light body and correcting the errors and thinking. Can you, before we do uh, an activation with you to activate our chakras, <laughs> can you share more on the class, this confident manifesting class? Yes, I'm, I'm excited about confident manifestation. It came up to me as the new year was approaching and I was thinking, what do I want to offer in the, in the, in the new year? Uh, Cause a lot of other stuff has come up in the past year. I found a play that I had written 20 years ago 
that in rereading it, I'm like, oh my God, this is really good because I wasn't reading it through that old judgmental self. And so I put a cast together and that's beginning to open up and I'm playing the lead role because I had written it for myself. Um, and so part of me was thinking, well, maybe I'm going to be letting my spiritual work go and moving into this. And then when I was meditating towards the, the new year coming, a uh, strong message from both Kuan Yin and Metatron was, no, this is all your work coming together. So that's the other thing that I see harmonizing. And so the, and so the, the, the guidance was, draw a crystal card and that will give you the information about, because I work with crystals and this deck called the Liquid Crystal Oracle, which is just, it, it, for me, it's a very powerful, a powerful tool for, for accessing guidance and spirit. And the card I drew was uh, Imperial Topaz, which is the Crystal of Confident Manifestation. And suddenly I saw in the meditation the, the Saturn V, which I've talked about a lot the past five or ten years, because as I tuned into to, uh, astrology and our connection with the planet Saturn and that it rules our physical life, I began, to, and this also connects with some of the stuff from the presence process, that those are, those are the Saturn V. I see the money, career, relationships, health, and home, I'm calling it now, rather than living situation, because it really is that sense of being at home. And those are the five things that have a tendency to push our buttons here on the planet, because they're really about our opportunities for processing, for creation, for, for ultimately joy and connection. And so I thought we can go through all those five and look at them so we can really connect our spirituality with what's happening in the world, with our ability to be present and really be co-creators of our own life. So that's really what it's about. So it was perfect. Five weeks, five uh, aspects of, of Saturn, the, the, the Saturn Five, and we're going to work through them in connection with the chakras. I will say I, I, I've learned not to plan and, you know, structure, you know, whenever I'm working with, with a series or groups too much because we're evolving so quickly. I'm always having to throw out what I thought it was and to be present with what's happening. But the clarity is that we're working with those Saturn V, how they relate to the chakra system, and really to have it be a clearing, allowing us to open in the support, because I think so much of the manifesting work, even in the spiritual community, has been somewhat about making things happen. You need to visualize it really clearly and make sure you see it. And my sense, especially when I'm seeing the things really manifesting recently in my life, is the more I let go, the more I trust, the more I tune into my own stuff, the more the universe shows me what's next and life becomes much more simple. So that's this conscious manifestation is not going to be a lot of work and making things happening. It's really helping to uh, discover how to draw in the support that's already there and to begin to notice how when we're aligned and balanced, how life just brings these things to us and all we really need to do is choose, okay, this is next. And the, also the gift that being in tune and staying in the moment is you also see where the clear energy is. It's, okay, this path was where I needed to go now, but this thing that seems like it's blocking me is not a block. It's actually saying something else is happening. So it's the ability to stay present. And Because I think if, if you're like me, many times you will tune into something, do your spiritual work, and you'll see things start to open, and then it will seem like something comes in and blocks you. That's never a block. That's always source saying, very often for me, put your focus somewhere else because you planted the seeds here, we're taking care of this, but now move to something else. And what I've learned by listening to my own consciousness, because we're multidimensional beings, it can be helpful for us not to be laser focused on one thing until we make it happen. Because when we do that, Spirit says, oh, well, I'm here to help you, but if you want to do it all yourself, go ahead. But we also can notice how when we do that, other aspects of our life sometimes get neglected and don't happen. So it really, I guess, to, you can see that I'm excited about this process. I think it's really about activating the multidimensionality of who we are and seeing how all those can blossom really organically when we're trusting the universe and 
staying open to the help that's always there. We don't have to do it all ourselves. We can if we want to, because spirit has, you know, spirit is empowering us. But I find my life is much more enjoyable, much more fun, and much more creative when creating the things that I want in money, career, relationships, health, and home. When I'm tuned in, when I give myself that breathing room to just have fun, what I call unagended activity that's not about some result, it's about enjoying life. And then spirit says, oh, well, you also want to move forward in this area. Here's the opportunity. Here's the theater company reaching out to you saying, hey, you know, here's this. So it's, it's, that's what confident manifestation is about. And I set it up so it happens and then we do the soul singing and then we do the presence process because that's the other uh, message I've been getting really strongly is it's time to really open things up. To, and that's also the message I'm getting from the people that I've been working with. They're ready. They're really ready to get on board and start going with the flow. Because that's the other term that kept coming up. That it's not about making things happen. It's all about simply surrendering to the flow that's already happening. And all the things that we've already put in place. If you're alive on the planet at this time, you're standing on that pyramid of souls, you're all your ancestors that have gone before you, and it's remembering that what we hold in our DNA is the entire history of the Earth. And our ancestors are going right back to the first sign of Earth that evolved out of the little seas. That's all in us. Not in our intellect, but in our cells, in our chakra system. So that's what so much of this work is about. It's really about now gathering all that energy that's already present and beginning to let this intellect, which has been so outwardly focused, start to notice, oh, it's already happening. Oh, I've already done all the work. Now's the time to let myself enjoy it, to take off those old glasses and see what's really here. So it's, 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 it's exciting. Yes, and that is really the physics, the vibration, and the frequency of new earth creations. And yeah. that's where we are on our planet. And in this year of 222 codes, it is that year to be spontaneous, to nurture, to bring the divine feminine energies into ourselves, to go with the flow, to use our intuition and uh, to create that way. It really is beautiful. So all of your courses bring this activation of the chakras. So let's take a moment in our closing minutes here and have you take us on a little short process, about five minutes or so. Beautiful. Um, all right, so I'd like to start with the miracle in three breaths, which I've used for years. There's a, a video of it on, I think, I believe on my website, but you can all, if you do Karsten Spencer Miracle in Three Breaths on YouTube, a couple of different videos will come up. But we do this with our eyes open, and one of the reasons is we're so used to when we do our spiritual work, we close our eyes and go within, and many of us can go to a very, you know, deep, connected place, but then the minute we open our eyes, a different part of us goes out into the world. So when you do the miracle in three breaths with the eyes open, it just helps you feel that inner connection and how it's connected with the outside world. So we start just by getting comfortable, feeling your connection with gravity. Notice wherever your body is connected to a chair or the floor. Feel that magnetic energy as Mother Earth herself pulling in spirit through your body. And take that first breath to really invite Mother Earth into the body. And as you exhale, just notice how that feels to be connected with Mother Earth. And then for the next breath, we open the crown and feel Mother Earth draw in spirit, draw in that full part of you. And as we exhale, we feel this fresh energy activating every cell and system of our body and moving through us. And then the third breath, right into the heart, we're activating our heart center. And as we exhale, we do an easy hum. Mm. 
And then just notice. And what I want you to notice with your eyes open is do you notice something present that you didn't notice before the hum and before you did that? It's not just your feeling with your feeling centers. I know when I do it, I just see auras. I see a beautiful aura around Lorraine. Now let's close our eyes and feel yourself. Feel the, the energy shift as you go within and bring yourself right back down to the root chakra. Take a deep breath and we're going to hum into the root. Now just notice what's present. And what I do want to say is you can't do this wrong. So if there's a voice in your head that's not sure if you're doing it right, just let that go. What you want to do is simply do it and notice. Now we're going to take another breath. And as we exhale, we hum into the sacral center. And you're just noticing what's happening, if anything's happening in the body, if any inner vision is there, or if nothing's there. Remember, nothing is always some t something. Sometimes it is the thing. Just being present. Now we're going to take another deep breath, and as we exhale, we'll hum into the solar plexus. Then just noticing, one thing you may be noticing is that the body seems to be inviting the breath in more fully or the breath seems to be moving more fully through the entire body. And if you're not feeling that, you're not doing it wrong, don't worry, just honor what your experience is. The next breath we're going to take as we exhale, we're going to start with the hum and then open up into an ah, because we're opening that heart center. Mm -hmm. ah. Once again, just notice, and I encourage you to continue to Breathe with an open mouth for a moment, because we open the mouth for the ah. And feel the freedom of that breath and how it seems to flow in so fully and directly into the throat, heart, and lower chakras with the mouth open. And now we're going to take another deep breath, and we're going to sing an om this time. So it's going to start out with the open ah, and then come into the om. And as it comes into the Om, feel it gather in the throat chakra, and then feel the throat chakra connecting the higher chakras, the physical senses, and the crown chakra as it comes together in the M sound. Om. Now breathing the next breath in through the nostrils and the third eye, that focusing center. And now sing a silent ah and feel the crown chakra open and feel those divine energies flowing in through that silent ah. I'm going to invite you to do another silent awe. Same thing with that crown chakra open. Feel those energies flowing in. And just notice if those energies want to draw you to any specific chakra, any specific area in the body.
and just notice wherever your energy seems to be gathering or grounding and let your that that that, that be the uh, the calling in of the next few breaths as you just feel your body come into harmony and balance with your chakra system, with the mental body, with the emotional body, and with the spiritual body. And finally, just allow yourself to trust the presence of those more expansive parts of you. The power of those, what I call the, the divine helpers, the angels and ancestors and things that the mental body can't even conceive of, that when you feel the connection, it's intimate, it's close, it's simple, it's, it's you. It's you. And I heard it described recently when I was doing one of my uh, new past life uh, regression processes. It's a sense of knowing that's beyond intellectual knowing and connects with an energy of satisfaction, of wholeness, of completeness. And of acceptance. It's, you know, I feel it as a as a kind of a compassionate, loving acceptance. Non-resistance. And other words or things may be coming up for you. The other thing that I really want to let people get is to trust it. It's all in you. It's all there. And as you feel ready, let your eyes open, giving yourself the suggestion that as my eyes open, I'm not letting go of this inner connection, but I'm allowing it to flow out into my world and saturate everything so that the world will look different as it does in each moment. Just as you are evolving in each moment, so is the world around you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is such a deep, peaceful connection. I personally felt that working in my eyes, seeing the new world in a new way, in a divine way, in a divine feminine way, divine masculine way, co-creating with creation. And Loren, I just want to uh, just thank you and honor you for what you're doing with Earth One and what you've been doing in your whole journey. And just share how this uh, paradigm that you've created through Earth One is so powerful. That's why I love working with you, because I can just feel it. And I know that it's not just you. It's all those that you've reached out and connected with and all those that you're going to. So that's the other thing that we're really feeling now is that this is, is blossoming and whatever we're putting out flows back to us. And you're, you know, I, I just bless you and want you to, to know that. Thank you. And we can feel that as everyone watching and listening does the same, we can see the effect it has on the world. And that's why... We all agreed to come here and do it. We said, yes, we can do it. And so we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that's another helpful thing to remember when heaviness is there, because that helped me when some of the heaviness was coming up. The reminder that, no, I chose to come here. And to remember that we chose to come from what we could remember from childhood, that joyful childhood sense of adventure that we came in with, and that it's still here. Even in those times when you kind of feel like you've lost it, Trust that that's when there's some real heavy evolving work. That's the cocoon that's allowing the evolution to, to blossom.
And those three breaths and a little humming and laughing will get us there. Yes. Activate your light body and share it with the world, everyone. Thank you, Karsten. This has been magnificent and we're exciting. We're excited for your courses. Every time we're with you, you put us in a beautiful space. Well, and I want to affirm, too, that we're also exciting. We're excited and we're exciting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, thank you, too, for listening, everyone. If you want to work more with Karsten, there's beautiful opportunities to do so. And we look forward to seeing you. And we thank you for your bright light. It is changing our world. Thank you, Karsten. You're very, very welcome, Loren, and thank you. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Bye-bye.